sound. Hold on one second. Let me just make sure I got the sound going. Okay, right. ready. All right. So sanitation or sanitization. Sanitization. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right, let's see. So during this session, we're just going to talk about some like four different topics. Um, it's gonna be glove and gown rules, how to clean kennels. I'm sure we all know how to do that. Um, administering medications and housekeeping. Um, and then at the end, we'll have the Q and A. And you can drop any questions that you have in the chat box so that you can remember um, and that we'll remember what we wanted to talk about. All right, so why do our protocols exist? Thank you, Renee, for doing videos. <laughs> um, all right. All right, so the reasons our protocols exist, most of our kittens we have gotten from the shelter where they came directly off of the street. We don't know what they have, whether they're contagious, they're carrying diseases, and so it's extremely important that we follow proper protocols, including glove rules, wearing gowns, and just making sure you're keeping everything sanitary. Um, this prevents us from getting other kittens in the nursery sick, and it also protects your cats at home from getting sick from our kittens and our kittens from getting sick from your cats. All right, so gowns and gloves. Um, it's really important for us to use the gowns and gloves. So we all know what our glove rules are, um, but Renee is going to explain it. So there's two different things. There's contaminated and dirty supplies, and then there's also clean supplies. So contaminated and dirty supplies would be anything in the kennel, including the kittens. It also includes anything that their saliva, their feces, their pee has touched. Um, really, anything at all in the kennel is considered contaminated. So if you're touching contaminated supplies, which is anything in the kennel, including the kittens, you have to be wearing gloves. Um, gloves must be switched between the kennels do not reuse gloves. So for each kennel, they are considered contaminated with their own germs and you can only use gloves with that kennel. Now, everything else is considered clean in the nursery. So shared supplies, food, um, disinfectants, um, litter, litter boxes, anything outside of the kennels should be clean at all times. So what that means is that when you are using, when you're in the kennel with your gloves, you cannot use those gloves to touch anything else outside of the kennel. So that means you're gonna either have to use someone else with clean hands to help you, or you're going to have to take off your gloves and use your clean hands to touch everything else. So, example, washed laundry is clean, food cans, water pitcher, rescue bottles, a roll of paper towels, all of that should be considered clean and only touched with clean, ungloved hands. Um, other things to consider would be don't ever touch a clean supply with a contaminated glove. So if you're in a kennel and you, even if you just touch a food bowl, that glove is not contaminated and you cannot go touch anything else in the nursery unless it's in the kennel. Um, so you'll have to take off that glove or use somebody else for help. Other things would be, be conscious it's about clothing and also your hair, especially masks now that we're wearing masks. If you have gloves and you've touched a kitten or anything in a kennel, and you go to readjust your mask, you go to pull your hair back, um, you straighten your shirt, you've now contaminated your hair, your mask, your shirt, and you shouldn't move any of that to another kennel. So you'll need to disinfect yourself. Um, if you kiss a kitten, that means your face is now contaminated. So don't kiss any kittens. And if you accidentally touch something with a contaminated glove, you do have to disinfect it. So that would be with rescue. Um, so if you touch the water bowl, the clean water bowl with a dirty glove, you're gonna go put it somewhere else and you're gonna have to disinfect that. If you touch the cart, the top shelf of the cart is always clean, you're gonna have to disinfect that. Um, the list goes on. So, the laundry, oh, one other thing. So, most, everything in the kennel is contaminated, but also you need to take into consideration that the dirty laundry is contaminated. So, when you're throwing a load of laundry into the washer, always use gloves because that laundry has poop on it, has pee on it, has saliva on it. 
It has a bunch of stuff from the kitten, so you do have to use gloves when putting dirty laundry into the washer. And then be careful because you're gonna have to take off your gloves and you actually start the washer. So you'll have to take it off and use clean hands to press all the buttons to start the washer. Oh, um, so I think we all know this and I've, I'm guilty of this. I've done this a thousand times. Um, go to grab the spray bottle and have my gloves on. Um, we, when we do that, we just need to know that we just spray the handle with the rescue. Um, but we want to try to be cognizant of, a, of when we're doing it. If we can. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at Renee's kitten sleeping on the couch there. Um, got sidetracked. Um, I, I think that's it. So when you're taking your gloves off, I don't know if everybody's aware of how to do this, but you can do it uh, without contaminating anything. So you notice there that she's not touching her skin with a contaminated glove. Um. So gowns and their uses. Um, we use lab coats because they have long, long sleeves. We would generally use them for kittens that are in quarantine. Um, kittens that have a suspected transmissible condition, like a URI or, you know, any of that good stuff. Um, especially Pan Luke. Yeah, especially Pan Luke. Um, we use hospital gowns and or, and or short sleeves with, for kittens who have been vaccinated, who have cleared quarantine, or are visitors in the nursery, because if they're visitors, they generally have their, uh, their vaccines. Um, but the, we've kind of changed things a little bit where the whole nursery is being looked at as quarantine. So we might ask ourselves, well, when do we use lab coats and when do we use hospital gowns now? Um, I think in general, if we know that a kennel has something like a URI um, or doesn't look well, you're gonna wanna use a lab coat um, just for extra protection. But if you are in a kennel and you notice that a kitten has something that might be transmissible, just make sure you go wash up to your elbows um, if you have a regular gown on. Um, we're all pretty good at not spreading disease. Um, so I'm just going to say just keep doing what you're doing. Um, and then for the foot bath, we used to have the foot bath going into quarantine, but we don't have quarantine now. Um, that is right in front of our isolation area. Um, you are always free to go and clean the bottom of your shoes, but I highly recommend that you clean the bottom of your shoes before you leave the nursery. Um, spray, just spray them down with rescue. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Spray the bottom of your shoes with rescue, just so that you're not tracking things out or taking anything home with you. Um, Another reason why we want to, you know, mop as often as possible. Um, is that it? I think that's it on the gloves and gowns. So how do we wear our gowns? Um, I always say we look like a mental institution um, <laughs> because we have our, we don't wear our lab coats the right way. We wear them the opposite way um, and our hospital gowns as well. Um, but you, we wear them, and I'm sure you guys all already know this. Um, it's all about protecting the clothing that we have underneath um, and not tracking things from one kennel to another. That's why we use the hospital gowns and the lab coats facing the opposite direction so that we have more coverage. One thing that I noticed be hmm. a while back is a lot of our volunteers seem to have not you guys but like normal volunteers they seem to have been using the gowns as a way to protect themselves from our kittens 
Um, I think it's important that we explain to volunteers that the gowns are not just to protect us, but it's to protect all of the kittens in the nursery. Yeah. Um, one, one thing that somebody mentioned to me a couple of months ago when I walked in and they were wearing a gown, like the first photo of Renee that is crossed out or the lab coat, um, and their shirt was completely exposed. And I told them that the proper way to use it is to turn the gown around and to cover your, your front side completely. They were really confused and they seemed to be concerned about bringing something home to their cats. Um, it seemed to really help to explain it to them and go into more detail about why, about how our protocols don't just protect your cats at home, but it, they protect our kittens here. And it's mostly to protect our kittens at the nursery because they are more susceptible, but also our cats at home. Yeah. All right. So our favorite thing to do and what we do most, <laughs> cleaning kennels. Um, so cleaning kennels while the kittens are inside. Do we use rescue? When do we use rescue and when do we use Dawn? Um, we generally want to use Dawn on the kennel for the, the whole time the kittens are in the kennel, unless you have something that like they had a poop explosion or something like that, then you would, you know, block the kittens off and you can use some Dawn, I mean, some rescue to clean it. But rescue is generally for disinfection. Um, Dawn is for spot cleaning. Um, we don't want to take too much of the smell of the kittens out of the kennel because cats, they feel comfortable. They Cats generally go by smell. Um, so when they're in an environment that's completely clean, it's a brand new environment to them. Um, even if they've been living in that kennel for some time. Um, if you remove everything that smells like them, it's a new environment and it can be very stressful for them. Um, so we generally just want to use Dawn if possible. And that also adds into the stress levels of the kittens at the nursery. Um, I, I know for those of you that have been volunteering with us for quite some time, when we first started, we had a lot of URI going throughout the nursery. Um, there were times that almost every kennel had upper respiratory symptoms. Um, a lot of that was due to stress, and that was from overcleaning the chemicals in the in the kennels and the steps that we are now doing to reduce stress, like the privacy towels. Um, so keeping the kittens smells inside of the kennels as much as possible, but also keeping it clean. It's yeah. important to keep their stress levels down, which improves their health. Yeah. So the big four, um, so this, I was like, what's the big four? <laughs> um, and now I understand. So when you're cleaning a kennel, you want to think about the big four areas that are most important. Um, food. Do they have wet and dry food? Do they have water? What does their litter box look like? and do a little bit of spot cleaning. So you're not always going to completely throw the litter box out. You wanna just kind of clean it out. If it's necessary, then you can throw it out. Um, you always wanna make sure that they have clean water. And then the food. Um, we have noticed that a, a lot of the, the dry food bowls have been filled completely to the top, which is not necessary. Um, I would say that we, could put maybe a quarter to a half of a bowl because yeah because if you remember we're there at least two shifts a day if not more um, and so the kittens are never going to run out of food um, and when we clean like clear the kennel out a lot of the times we're just throwing away big bowls of food which is wasteful and we want to try to you know reduce the use of supplies that we don't need to use um, but spot cleaning is, you know, it, the kennels are not going to be perfect and I don't expect them and none of us expect them to be perfect. And actually you clean and you don't look back clean and <laughs> move on. Um, kittens are going to mess it up no matter what, especially if they're healthy, uh, healthy kittens are going to make a mess. Um, unless it's, you know, diarrhea or something, but I'm talking about just jumping around. Um, so we also want to use dividers as much as possible. You don't want to remove the kittens from the kennel if you can help it. Um, if it, 
hopefully they're in the kennel that you can, you know, use a divider and the ones that you can't use dividers for, I've been using the track toys. If you put them in the little cubby, you can stick a track toy there and kind of hold it so that you can do things in the kennel. Um, removing them from the kennel is also stressful for them. Um, and like we were saying, it's really important to reduce stress in the kittens. But I, you know what? Everybody's been doing such a great job. We have had such a low occurrence of illness and no spread of any of the URIs or anything. So I'm really impressed. Um, so we just want to kind of keep doing what we're doing. So handling supply containers. So the trash can lid, the laundry bin, and the gown bags. Um, do we handle those with gloves? No, clean hands only. Um, so we want to take our gloves off whenever we touch these things. And if we do touch them, we just want to make sure that we wipe them down, spray, you know, anyway, we should just be spraying things down with rescue. Um, the, best, the best way to handle these, the lids for these bins is to remove them at the beginning of your shift before you even get started. So when you, before you even get started with cleaning or passing out food or whatever it is that you do first during your shift, remove the, the trash can lids and just put them in the back, still on the cart so that it's yeah. by the trash can um, using your clean hands. That way you don't have to worry about touching the lids between each kennel. Um, and that reduces, that, that'll okay. reduce contamination on the, on those lids. Um, for the gown bags, you handle them like you do your dirty or do the dirty laundry. You're going to use clean gloves, um, only clean gloves. And if you do touch something contaminated with your gloves or even your clean hands, and then you go to touch something that's clean, just make sure that you clean it off. You disinfect it with, with some rescue. Um. <laughs> and I think for me, it just, well, all of this seems like so much, but it's become second nature to me now. So sitting here trying to talk about it, I'm like, wow, yeah, we just automatically do those things like take the <laughs> lids off. And, you know, so it, once it becomes part of your nature of being there, it's not as difficult as it seems. Um, and if, if you don't take the lids off in the beginning of your shift, you forget or whatever the case is, ask one of your volunteers with clean hands to remove the lids for you um, if you're already in a kennel with contaminated gloves. All right, so after a uh, litter moves out of one of their kennels, um, we always wanna do three rounds of rescue. So that is to make sure that they're not leaving any cooties behind. Um, the first sanitation should be enough, but we overkill with two and three just because there's certain illnesses that if one fomite is left behind, um, it, it could spread to the next litter. Um, and obviously the three sanitations is working. You also want to, if we can, have each kennel the three rounds done by three different people. Um, mm -hmm. And that's because everybody cleans a kennel differently. Um, I know the other day we, there was a kennel that I disinfected. I, we went in late at night and we were just kind of sitting there for a while and there was a kennel that needed the third round of sanitation. And so I went in and I cleaned it and I sprayed it down. And when I looked underneath the shelf, there was still little poop spots. Oh. So it's important that we do our best to try to have three different people clean the kennels um, or sanitize the kennels between litters because things get missed. Um, when we're doing the, when we're cleaning kennels every single day, we kind of just get into the habit of just doing a quick spot clean. Um, even when you're doing a full sanitation, things get missed. So, and if it's all done by the same exact person, it's very likely that those same little spots are going to get missed by that same person. Um, so it's important to try to have three different people do it so that every single inch of that kennel is disinfected. Um, and Disinfecting the kennels, it includes everything in the kennel from the door, the bars on the top of the door, um, the top of the, the kennel itself, every little inch that you can. Um, let it sit in the rescue for a minimum of 10 minutes, 10 minutes during each, each sanitation, and then you go in and you wipe it down. 
Yeah. Uh, you will, if you have some messy kittens, like our, our recent bat babies that just left to foster that finally got over their diarrhea, um, you're probably going to have some spots of poop that are stuck on the wall and you're going to have to use some elbow grease to get that off. Um, mm. But we do have some little silicone scrubbies in the bathroom that can be used for that as long as they're disinfected afterwards in the, the sanitation bin in the sink. Um, you can also use just like a small washcloth to really get, get everything off if the paper towels just aren't cutting it. Just put it in the, the laundry bin to be washed with everything else. Good news is the rescue kind of breaks everything up really good. <laughs> so. yeah. All right. And then here's a video of Renee cleaning a kennel. In a kennel. The first step is to actually assess the kennel and figure out what you need um, and get everything you need ready beforehand um, with your clean hands. So I've already done that to this kennel here. I'm going to need a divider because they're crazy and I'm going to need to separate them. I have a pre-soaked paper towel with Dawn that I will need. I have a bowl of water. I have dry food. I don't need a bowl so I'm just going to show you how I take off my glove to do this. And I didn't need a new litter box because I already looked and it was fine. So I'm just gonna take the poop out and their blanket looked fine. So I could have blankets just in case. You also would want your garbage to already be open with your clean hands so that you don't have to touch them later with your dirty hand gloves. Otherwise it's kind of difficult to take off the glove and do it while your hands are full. So we'll get started. I'm going to have to separate these guys because they look a little wild. So I put them in their little cubby hole. Hi, baby. Put you in the cubby hole. I'm going to use the divider to trap them in there. Don't get their paws. So now I get to work in here without them bothering me. So I, you can also put this stuff on the second level of the cart that you're putting back in the kennel. But I personally, if I have room, I just put it up here the stuff that I'm leaving in here, um, just to get it out of my way for the time being. So this is also clean. So all that's clean. So I do have a checklist every single time I go into a kennel and it's wet food, which I already gave them, dry food, water, litter box, and then spot clean. So I say that before I go in the kennel so I can get everything ready and then I'll do it at the end just to double check myself and make sure I remembered everything I was supposed to. So the first thing we will do the litter box. And so their litter box, the outside as you can see is still pretty clean. So I'm just gonna take the poop out. Luckily, I already opened my garbage can so I can go straight out here. It's easiest to just use a glove. And just get out all the bad parts. And they actually don't need more litter. If they need more litter, I would either need to ask someone to go get me a scoop, or I would have to take off this glove and use my clean hand to scoop this in here. So, since this is so messy, I'm actually gonna put this up here just for the time being while I get everything else ready. So, I already got a bowl of water since I could tell this one was really bad. So, since this is completely dirty and it's gonna go into dish and I don't need it anymore, it can go on the bottom shelf. And then I have my dry food, which I will refill in a second. First, I just wanna clean this up. I usually use my hands. We do have little brooms that are available, but they, sometimes it's actually easier and quicker just to use your hand, but it's up to you. If they have a dirty food bowl, a lot of times I'll actually just scoop this onto their dirty food bowl also. The reason I'm not really going over is because this kennel is actually sticking out a little bit and if I try and scoop this over, it's going to just fall right into her kennel. And that defeats the purpose. Now I'm going to have 
have my pre-soaked paper towel that I already got ready so that I don't have to touch the Dawn and just clean this out. absolutely perfect, but as long as you got all the big stains out, the poop spots, then you're fine. If there's any food smeared everywhere, so litter box, I can put back. Yes, I know. Toys. If they're big enough to jump up top, I like to give them heavy food and water bowls up top so that they don't put all of their litter into it. Um, these guys were up top earlier, so I will. Oh, I forgot to refill my dry food. So to refill my dry food, I do have to take this glove off. And then I touch my food with my clean hand. When you're doing this, also be careful because it doesn't work if you hit this to the bowl. Because then you've contaminated the whole food container with the bowl. So there we go. And then I can put this back. I'll put their toy back. I'll get my bowl of water. All right, so my checklist is wet food, which they actually have over here, dry food, water, litter box, and I still have to spot clean their bed over here. So, I need to put a glove back on because I'm going back in. But you have to be careful not to touch your hand. All right, so now I go back in. Hi, my friends. Look how cute you are. You have such a nice box. Okay, let's move you over here. I'm gonna move them over here so that you can stay out of my way. Whoop. So they have a nice little bed in here box with a blanket that I'm, is clean enough. There's no poop or food on it, but it does have crumbs. When you're doing this, be careful. Don't let the blanket touch the garbage can because if you do, then you just need to get a whole new blanket. And also try to get everything in the garbage can. Okay, here we go. So I put the clean side up. Look out. Okay, there you go. All right. So I have wet food, dry food, water, litter box, and spot cleaned. I made to make sure I take out my divider so that they have access to everything. Otherwise, you trap them. Woo! And they are clean. So I can put this down at the bottom too because that's going to have to be sanitized later. And so that's just for regular spot cleaning when the kittens are in the kennel. If the kittens are out of the kennel and you have to deep clean it, that's when you take everything out, sanitize everything, whether it's the laundry or the hard stuff that goes in dish, and then you'll need to spray it down with the rescue garden hose, let it sit for 10 minutes, wipe it down, and that has to happen three times. Um, ideally, it'll be by three different people, but sometimes that's not possible. Um, so just try and make sure you're not forgetting anything. So you're getting the front of the door, the back of the door, the handle, the ceiling, um, the underside of the shelves, the bars, and yeah. And so that happens three times, rescue, 10 minutes. After that, it's considered clean, and you can put new kittens in. And I think that's it. So this is how you don't open the trash. going to do anything, if you're going to take this trash lid off, make sure you remove your gloves first. So you need to take them off carefully and then use a clean hand because this should always be considered clean and then put your gloves in.
All right. So good job, Renee. Thank you. <laughs> um, so when we administer medications, there's also a way to do that. We always want to prepare the meds um, with clean hands. Um, let's see. We want to clean and sanitize any reusable items like the nebulizer and the incubator. Um, always using clean hands when dispensing medications. Um, baggies. So the baggies that are hanging on the, the kennels, those should be considered contaminated. You don't know if anybody has touched them. Um, the medication bottles are going in and out of them. So we would always want to use gloves when touching those as well. Um, items like syringes, needles, and et cetera should not be used across litters. Items such as tobramycin, teramycin, um, that are likely to make contact with the kittens should be discarded after that litter. Um, we, well, we haven't done it in a while, but we are probably going to be getting some of the, the single administration bottles for like eye drops and those things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you just wanna make sure that they get discarded at the end. Um, items like Clavamox or LRS, which is lactated ringers, um, where a clean syringe is being used for each are okay to use for multiple litters. So you'll notice in the med cabinet, we have a bag of uh, fluids hanging. Um, we go and take fluids for you know, lots of different kittens from that same bag, but we're using clean, uh, all clean sanitized uh, supplies to withdraw those, uh, those fluids. And then once we administer the fluids to that particular kitten, we dispose of those needles and syringes. And that's the same for like Clavamox in the fridge. When we have multiple kennels on Clavamox, you can actually use the same bottle for all of those kittens, whether they're litter mates or not, because you're using clean hands and you're using brand new syringes for every administration. Mm -hmm. So what I typically do is I will print out my task list, um, single page printing. And then in the beginning of my shift, I'll lay out all, all of the papers I administer or I draw out all of the medications and I put them on the printed section for those cats. Mm -hmm. So like we recently had witch, vampire and werewolf that were all on doxycycline. And then we had uh, Ember, Cole and Ash that were on metronidazole. So I printed out those papers, I withdrew all of the medications and I put it on top of the, the printed paper on top of their name. So I know what medication is for who. And then before I would go into the kennel, I would grab their, their medication from on top of the paper with clean hands, administer it. When I'm done cleaning the kennel and giving medications, I'll remove my contaminated gloves, go over to my paper and check off that I did it. Yeah. Um, but for a while, I was noticing that there was a lot of used syringes being cleaned in the sink. Don't be shy to throw syringes away. If those are considered one-time use syringes, they actually, they don't wear well when you try to reuse them. Um, the little, the plunger inside of them um, has something in it that makes it easy to slide for the first couple times you use it and then it's not, you can't use them anymore. So just throw them away. Don't be shy. They're, they're really not that expensive and I'd rather pay and get new ones and keep us stocked in syringes than risk something being stuck on a syringe. Um, and last but not least is the scale. So when sanitizing the scale, you want to make sure that you, you, first of all, you want to make sure that you're sanitizing the scale in between use. Um, you don't have to sanitize it in between kittens from the same litter or the same kennel, but you definitely want to sanitize in between kennels. Um, you can use one of those plastic trays. We actually have two of those there. Um, you can use one, sanitize the other, and then switch them but you also have the option of using one of the little litter trays on top of the scale, which you don't even need to sanitize. Um, you can just throw that out. Personally, I like to use the, dis the disposable litter trays, the cardboard ones, um, especially if the kittens in the kennel need a disposable litter box. 
So I will actually go in and I'll get the, the clean litter box, um, well, the empty and clean litter box, put it on top of the scale with clean hands, um, weigh the kittens in that, and then before, while I'm setting up the kennel again and as I'm replacing the litter box inside of the kennel, I'll have one of my volunteers with clean hands just give me a scoop of litter so that I'm not, I'm not wasting any of those disposable litter boxes. Um, but we're also, it's also easier to disinfect um, because you don't have to disinfect the actual tray, just the scale itself. And for the scale, you can use a paper towel that is soaked with rescue or you can use a rescue wipe. Um, the scales that we've been getting recently, they're water resistant. So if you, if you do spray a little bit on the scale, it's not going to break it like it has all of our ones in the past. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to completely soak the scale. So you want to clean it and make sure that, that the top of the scale is pretty saturated, but not dripping with cleaner. Yeah. All right. Next. Let's see. Um, so rescue solution. Um, so how do you mix rescue? You mix rescue with one part rescue and 15 parts water. So um, one of the spray bottles would take maybe an ounce of rescue, an ounce? Am I thinking like a quarter of a cup? I'm th yeah. sorry. Um, to a whole thing of water. Um, when I don't have the notes, so I'm not sure what it said right there. But um, when you're doing laundry, you want to put one cup of bleach in the little uh, pocket on the side of the washer. Um, and also in the sanitation bin, one cup of bleach. We have the measuring cups. Yeah. And then fill it to fill the sanitation uh, bin all the way up to like the two gallon line and the mop the mop bucket. How much? I said a half a cup, but I guess recently somebody said that that's already uh, it's, ready it's ready to use, which I thought it was concentrate. So I'll have to get back to you on that, but I'm I'm pretty sure that it was concentrate. Um, filling the mop bucket. Yeah, we can all we can always use bleach with it. Um, most important thing is that we're mopping the floors. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, the ZEP. It just needs to be some kind of cleaner. So but we with don't the mop bucket. You do not want to use rescue in it. Yes. And the reason for that is because it, there's a couple of reasons. It gets very very soapy and sudsy, so it makes the floors very slippery. Um, and when it dries, it leaves a film on the floors that actually catches more dirt um, and it makes it still slippery after it dries. Yeah. Um, so the rescue in the mop bucket, it's, it's just not a great idea with the flooring that we have. Um, we can use bleach one cup to two gallons water, the same with the sanitation bin. Um, while we figure out exactly what the ZEP concentrate is, we we were sure that we ordered the concentrate, but I guess the one that was delivered is ready to use. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and just use the bleach. Um, and then if we decide to go back to the ZEP, we'll post about it in Sling. Also, side note, the picture is there's actually a two gallon mark on the mop bucket. Yes. It's very small and not colored so it's hard to see but that's what this is a picture of so there actually is a marking for two gallons so that you know exactly how much to put in makes it easy <laughs> yeah and then wipe down your handles at the end of every shift you want to make sure that you're wiping down the handles to every single kennel um and that's because you at some point when you're cleaning the kennels you're always going to be touching the handles with a contaminated glove and you don't want the handles or the outside of the kennel to be considered contaminated when the next shift comes in. Um, that just makes it that just makes it a higher risk of spreading any kind of disease. Um, when you go in to, to feed the kittens at the beginning of your shift, before you pull out any dirty plates or anything, you're going to be touching those handles. And you don't want those germs to be going from kennel to kennel to kennel. Um, so at the end of your shift, make sure that you use a rescue wipe or a paper towel soaked in rescue to just quickly go through, wipe down every handle, 
Um, and that at the same time as you're doing your COVID sanitations, which is the microwave from constantly warming up the heat discs, um, the fridge handle, if you've gotten into the fridge, all of the door handles for, to the bathroom and the front door, um, that includes the washer buttons, since we're touching those all the time, the faucet, and then the desk area. Yeah. So. And now Q and A. Awesome. Um, I see that one of the questions on here already is: Is B mod still a glove exception? Um, I would say gloves should be used for everyone as often as possible. Um, when you're cleaning, yes, but when you're specifically going in to socialize the kittens, you don't have to use gloves. And especially if it's, if the kittens have a priority BMOD tag, that means that those kittens need every, every chance they can get to become used to humans. So the reason that we have that glove exception for BMOD kittens is because we want the kittens to get used to the smell and the feel of a human hand and not a latex glove. Mm -hmm. um, obviously it smells completely different. So when, when they do get to a point or even to a foster where gloves aren't being used, they, they're looking at a brand new ungloved hand like what the heck is this? I don't know what this is. Um, so I think if they're just slightly hissy and you can handle them, still use your gloves. But if they are, if they're priority B mod and they're hissing and spitting and they're, you have to wrap your hand in a blanket to even get them, it's a good idea to remove your gloves for socialization. Yeah. Um, you can still use your gloves in B mod kennels for cleaning so that you're not touching or handling any, any litter boxes or anything like that with bare hands. But for socialization purposes, you can remove your gloves. And there's a new litter there we just dropped off this morning that you can practice with. <laughs> yeah. um, should the sanitation bin use bleach or rescue? We should be using bleach in the sanitation bin um, because all of them are going to be washed normally after that just with, with uh, dish soap and warm water. Um, but bleach is going to do the same thing as the rescue does as long as it's soaking for long enough. Um, when in the sanitation bins, the bleach, it, it works just fine. The rescue works too, but we want to try to save the rescue for the really contaminated areas like the kennels. Um, and it's so sudsy. The, the rescue is just so sudsy. Yeah. You put a tiny bit in and it'll just overflow with suds. Yeah. So. And when, when the sanitation bin is filled with rescue, that's when you notice that the dishes have a film over it. So the rescue, it's really good for disinfecting areas where the kittens are staying. But for dishes that the kittens are eating in, you don't want that film to be on it. There's been a couple of times that I have actually grabbed a clean water bowl and I filled it and there's a, there's a weird layer of just the rescue film in the water and we don't want the kittens drinking that. So always use bleach in the sanitation bin and then wash normally after. I do have a note about that too though. Sometimes like, so obviously some of the track toys don't fit completely or like if you have it really full, some things don't fit. So I mm -hmm. or like the kennel dividers. So I will spray the stuff that's sticking out with rescue. Yeah. So that I don't have to rotate it and wait like 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, so what I typically do is I will always spray the track toys down um, with rescue before I even try to put them in the sanitation bin, I'll set them in the sink outside of the bin and spray them down with rescue um, and then and then wash normally. So with the bigger items like that, that's where the rescue comes in handy. But for dishes that kittens are eating out of, you want to always use bleach. Yeah. Anybody have any other questions? Actually, yes. D yes messaging here. Um, D is asking, are there any relaxation on the COVID cleaning as the county is opening up more and more? 
I'm going to say no, because COVID is still out there. And even if COVID isn't out there, that the our sanitation protocols keep the kittens safe. They keep us safe. And I just think they're really good to have. Um, but on that note, I think that with restrictions lifting, we have been a little bit more relaxed on the mask rules. So what we've been doing the last two weeks or so is in the beginning of your shift, if everyone on the shift is fully vaccinated, you everybody can remove their masks if you guys are comfortable with it. But that's a situational thing. Um, so it just depends on if everyone is vaccinated. If you have somebody that comes to the shift and they're not vaccinated, then you need to keep your mask on. Yeah. I will also say I did COVID cleaning before it was called COVID cleaning, just because yeah. <laughs> it is common spaces that you all touch that in theory you could have spread a URI or pan Luke or whatever it may be. So it's not really just for COVID. It's for anything people commonly touch where you may have messed up at one point and you didn't even catch it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that'll keep us all from getting the flu in the future, too. Um, <laughs> just, just good practices, huh? It looks um, like the, Rhonda's got her hand up. Yeah, I, I didn't know how to type a question. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> I haven't done meetings on Zoom, so I've just listened to people. Number one on the gowns, because at first when I was trying, I didn't know about putting gloves on. I always wash my hands and my arms after I put gowns in the washing machine. Is that acceptable or should I be putting the gloves on? Because the gowns are going up the arms when you're carrying them. Yeah. Um, I would say if you're washing, if you're washing really well up to your elbows after you touch the, the dirty gowns, then yes, that is acceptable. Um, but we want to try to start using gloves as often as possible when handling anything contaminated. Okay, my next question, and this has to do with the cleaning. Um, if the kitties have done their monstrous job of throwing all their food on their floor of their kennel, uh -huh. is it acceptable to just pick that up and put it in their food bowl? If it's clean, yes. Yeah. Okay. If it doesn't have litter in it or, or they haven't put it in a pile and pooped in it, then yes, it can go back in their food bowl. Okay. Um, it As doesn't have to be thrown away, but yeah, as long as it's clean, you can, they can still eat it. Yeah. Cause they're definitely going to eat it off the bottom of the kennel <laughs> if you don't pick it up. So yeah, yeah that's what I figured. They're going to eat it <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So rather than and throwing then, it out away. Okay. Ron, just to back up a little bit, when you were talking <laughs> about the, the gowns, you know, those yellow bags, they come off of the, uh, the cart yeah. so easily. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing. I didn't do that before until just a couple months ago. And you take the whole bag off and just, just dump it. The whole thing and then you don't even have to touch the gowns. Okay. Yeah, I've never done that. So th those are really easy to get off. Okay. Yeah, I just started. Yeah, I just started doing that. And I was like, oh, that's what these are for. So <laughs> yeah, easy. Okay, uh, thanks. I'll do that next time. <laughs> And then my yes. last question, you talked about using those little dis litter disposable, <laughs> those boxes for weighing. Yes. Now those active kitties, don't you find that they kind of um, tip them yeah. over? And, <laughs> and you know what, that's just an option. You can okay. use the plastic bins. Um, that's why we do have two of them there. Um, you can use one while you're sanitizing the other and then switch them out when you get to the next litter or use a litter tray. Um, just some options. Oh, okay. And my last question, because I know we had this conversation about our sanitation bin, and I thought it ended up at a half a cup of bleach for the sanitation bin and not a cup. And I still remember the comment, oh, I've been using too much bleach. It's no wonder I'm... You're probably <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, Amanda just fell. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, you're probably right, because if you think about it, that's probably a gallon of water in that bin. Mm -hmm. I would um, think I so. Our sanitation bin actually has marks for one and two gallons. Really? Um, it, it is one cup of bleach per two gallons. Okay. So if you're filling it with just one gallon, then yes, it's going to be half a cup. But if you're doing it two gallons, then you're going to do a full cup. Okay. I haven't been using enough then. I thought we had gone to a half a cup. Okay. <laughs> Good. I listen. You to know, you. if you think about it, the things are soaking in there longer than yeah. ten minutes. So even if you're not using enough, they're they're getting sanitized. Um, we just, yeah. Okay. All right. 
I will remember that. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, yeah, Dee has one in the chat. She said, can we oh. share the Renee cleaning the kennel video oh, yep. with the volunteer shared uh, folder? I think it's currently in the lead folder. Yes, we can. Yeah, we'll share the videos at the end. Um, looks like Dee also has another question. She said, I wanted to clean the OB kennels that Jesse and James are in, but wasn't really wasn't sure where to start due to the pan leak exposure. I noticed that there are supplies there that would be great to use when disinfected correctly, like spray bottles and more. Um, so that area, everything in that area, the, that those are no longer our OB kennels. So recently we had we had the director of the medical team from Best Friends LA's kitten nursery come to, to our nursery just to make sure that everything that we're doing is proper to limit any kind of pan luke spread. Um, since this year pan luke is so rampant, we've seen more pan luke this year than any year in the past. So we wanted to make sure that everything that we're doing is the right way to do it so that we can continue saving kittens without having to shut the entire nursery down every time we get a litter with pan loop. Yeah. So what we decided when she came in was those kennels are actually perfect for our pan loop kittens. So that, that separate space now, it's only going to be used for pan loop positive kittens. Um, Everything in that area, it's not going to come out of there. It's all going to stay there, a separate set of supplies specifically for those kennels. Um, because we're doing pan luke in that area, we don't want to risk any kind of spread. So those supplies do need to stay there, but I, I have noticed that we are, some of our spray bottles have broken. Um, we've had some things that have just kind of disappeared. So we are going to be working on getting some more of those items so that we have more on the main floor to use. But also D, just to kind of, I think, cover what you were asking too, everything in those kennels, it, it's gotta be dead because I have sprayed it and <laughs> sprayed it and sprayed it and sprayed it and it's just been sitting. Um, so if you, any of you were to go in and wanna clean any of those kennels, you would just spray it and then wipe it out again. Um, and just be conscious like it was a quarantine area. You just wanna treat it like quarantine. You know, use long sleeves, use your gloves. We've actually yeah. just got a shipment of disposable gowns. Um, like we used to use in the quarantine area, but then we had a very difficult time getting them because of COVID. Um, so we just got a shipment of some of those that, of 50 of those for now, that will only be used in that area when we have pan loop positive kittens. So that we're not using our same gowns for pan loop kittens onto the main floor and like when we had Jesse and James, the gowns that we used to treat them just went directly in the trash. Yeah. Um, so we got the disposable ones just to completely stop any risk of spread. But they're precious, they're like gold. So <laughs> we don't wanna use them yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is this? Let's see, another question. How are we dumping the mop? bucket lifting it to the sink or dumping it in the street you can dump it in the toilet well honestly that's what i mean that's what i do here at home mm -hmm. if you just dump it in the toilet all it all goes out um, or the street not contaminating medicine bottles even when there's a dedicated one to a litter it should be labeled that's for that particular litter and attached to the kennel as best as possible Yes, so we want to, when we have, when we have kittens that are getting doxy or metronidazole or something like that, that can be separated into a smaller bottle and hung on the kennel, we want to do that as often as possible. Um, that way we're just completely eliminating any contamination of our bulk bottles of medication. Um, because if we contaminate an entire bottle of like 150 mLs of doxycycline, that's gonna, that's not gonna be fun because we're out doxycycline. Um, so if we do prescribe any medications to kittens that can be separated from the bottle and hung on the kennel, 
then we should do that as often as possible. Um, we do have a label maker that's connected to the computer that's closest to the door in the like in the office area. Um, so you can go in and print labels, but whoever prescribes the medication will more than likely withdraw some of the medication and put it in a bottle with a label. Um, but you're gonna dose it out according to the task list on Shelter Club. Any other questions? I have a question. Did anyone notice what I did wrong in my cleaning the kennel video? I made a mistake. <laughs> you did, but I can't remember what it is now. I mean, were we thinking that? Oh. Nobody? All right, uh, $50 Amazon gift card if you... <laughs> If you can, oh, I have to go back and watch it <laughs> to remind me what I saw. So I touched a contaminated handle with my clean hand. Okay, that's what. Okay, I remember watching you shut the door and I should have the... shut the door with my glove, but I shut it with my clean hand. Ah, so now I got to yeah. redo it. But if you can answer this, how do you correct that? Wash my hands. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alexa got it. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it then. You know what? You guys are all so amazing. Um, every one of you leaders in the nursery and I'm so grateful to have all of you. We definitely couldn't do what we do without you. Um, if you have any suggestions, any ideas, any questions, um, just know that this is a team effort. Um, we are all here to just kind of work things out together, you know, for the, the good of the kittens um, and for all of us too. Yeah, so never hesitate to reach out to any of us, um, the admin team to change anything, improve anything. If you wanna get involved in any other way, feel free to let us know. Um, like she said, we're a team here. So mm -hmm. if you guys have anything that you wanna talk about, any concerns, any, any, if there's any way that we can improve as a team, do not hesitate to reach out. And does everybody like Mediterranean food? <laughs> no, I'm going to put a, a post out because I think I found a place to have our lunch. Um, and it's this great Mediterranean place that has like vegan and vegetarian options. Um, so I'm going to be, watch for that. I'm going to put that on our, our, our lead chat. That sounds great. I love Mediterranean. It sounds good yeah. to me. Actually, my niece works there, so she found it for us. <laughs> but it's a really nice place. <laughs> cool. All right. I think that's, that about wraps it up. Yep. yep. There, Claudia there, and Jessica, a quick question from you before. I mean, everyone else can leave, but I, I, um, it, my, my volunteer, my shadow today mentioned wanting to foster. Mm-hmm. I told her.